Hey, welcome back everybody. In this project video, we're gonna build a cover for a spiral notebook. A lot of people like using a spiral notebook just for general note taking, journaling, whatever. We designed one of these recently. If you follow us on Instagram, you might have seen it. It had like a deer antler type of brand there on the front. And in the designing of that particular notebook for that customer, I wanted to come up with some type of closure that kept it shut, but didn't necessarily, I don't ever do zippers. Uh, we might get into that at some point. Those are pretty difficult for me. But I wanted to come up with something that wasn't a big, huge flap over the front because I wanted the front to be pretty well exposed if you centered a brand up in the middle of it and so we came up with this type of little snap closure here it worked out so well on that one I went ahead and had dies made so we do um, have the dies to click these out and we do offer these on the website in a six pack if you want to try these and not have to cut these out by hand um, they come with a slot already in them and they're ready to go all you've got to do is dye them or oil them whatever color you're gonna do and then skive them down we'll show you how to do that in the video but this spiral notebook it works out really well. The thing I like about it is that the snap closure, it's very simple. It doesn't, um, it's not very complicated. It doesn't get in the way. And with a spiral notebook, the thing that I like about this design here, it's got just a chap leather, just one single piece of chap leather, something thin and soft for the spine on here, which allows you to kind of fold it back on itself, which I think with a spiral is very important um, because all of us when we use a spiral you've got it folded back on itself as you're using it and so that allows this cover to, to be done the same way a lot of notebook covers when you do them you've got to lay it flat it won't fold back in on itself and so that makes this one really nice it, when you go to close it you got to kind of play with it a little bit but I think once it gets kind of broke in it'll work out really well and then the snap just goes right through that slot and then back over and snaps in place and the book is closed. Uh, in this video, I went ahead and made this for a three subject notebook. Now in my designing, um, the original one I did was for a three subject notebook in a college rule uh, size on the paper. I did not realize, but there is evidently a difference in some of the some of the spiral notebooks, and they may all be kind of different. I kind of found all kinds of different information online about them, um, but I had just picked this one up at the grocery store, and it was a, I didn't realize it was a wide rule. When I went to put it in here, it actually didn't fit because the pages are wider. So on a college rule compared to a wide rule, or at least with these two. They're the same height, but they're different widths. So keep that in mind. Um, we do offer a pattern pack for this project video like we always do. And that link is down in the description if you would like to purchase that pattern pack. In there, I have the spine that I used on this one. So the pattern for the spine is here. It has a note in there that you need to adjust the width of this depending on the spiral notebook that you are making it for. So if you wanted to make it for a single subject, you would just narrow the width of that spine. If you wanted to make it for a five subject notebook, like this one a much thicker one then you would widen the spine so just keep that in mind other than that the front panel back panel pockets everything exactly the same you can change this up to fit whatever spiral notebook you want by simply changing the width of your uh, spine piece here and the front panel when you if you get the pattern pack the front panel fits on here when I'm designing that and trying to figure out how big the spine needs to be it fits on basically right you butt it up right to the spirals so you can figure out from there this distance around the spirals that's basically all you're making room for so whenever you get it if you're going to buy one of these that's a five subject or a single subject you just go put the pattern right there against the spirals there on the front and then try to measure out how much distance you're going to need there and then you can widen that spine and make it fit whatever notebook you want but that's just a couple quick tips on the notebook let's get started
Okay, so we got all our pieces cut for our spiral notebook cover. The first two pieces I cut out was the 9, 10 ounce body pieces. You could definitely cut these out of six, seven, eight ounce, anywhere in there. I would cut them out of something a little bit heavier just so that it's got some stability to it um, and it's not so flimsy. All the interior pieces, you'll have two liners, two uh, larger pockets to hold the actual spiral notebook in place, and then two loose leaf paper pockets. I cut all of those out of four ounce uh, Herman Oak veg tan leather. You can use anything you want to line that with pigskin or if you've got something else you want to use uh, but just be sure that it's around four ounce I wouldn't do it much lower than that I wouldn't do a two ounce since these loose leaf paper pockets they'll get pretty flimsy on you then we cut out the spine piece and the spine piece I cut out of a piece of uh, I think it's four six ounce uh, ch old tan chap leather you can use anything you want you can even go ahead and use a piece of three four ounce veg tan if you want to the idea is to keep that soft because we're making it for a spiral notebook and it's got these spiral um, you know the spiral binding here so I wanted something soft there that doesn't mash these up because if you ever used a spiral notebook in college or in high school you'll know that those spiral things get squashed up pretty easy and then the notebook's just a pain in the butt to use. So we're going to go ahead and prep this real quick for tooling. I'm going to get it all taped up and then I'm going to do a little bit of tooling on the front and then some on the back. The pattern pack does have a variation of tooling patterns in there, floral tooling patterns, like we always do. So if you're wanting to make one of these, we've made a few that have like a spot for initials or a brand or something like that. You can definitely check that out. But we'll go ahead and get this one going. I'm going to get it tooled, show you a little bit of the tooling, and then we'll get to putting this thing together.
All right, so we got all our tooling done, and now we're just going to go ahead and oil and antique these pieces. I'm just oiling these with olive oil like I usually do. So we'll just put a good coat on there, let it float out, and then even out, and then we'll go ahead and antique these. All right, so while that oil is soaking in, we're going to go ahead and edge and slick our little snap closure pieces here and get those ready so that we can get those dyed. Okay, so now that we've gotten those slick, we're gonna go ahead and prep these for installation. And what we're gonna do is just, you can use a spray bottle if you want. I'm just gonna use our dauber with water and wet down that cross piece there. And we're gonna go ahead and skive that. We want a long, nice, tapered, feathered edge so that it runs seamlessly between the liner and the body when we install it. So you'll see here what how we're gonna skive those, but you wanna go ahead and do that now and that way that part's done and they're ready to install when we go, go to assemble this. Okay, so depending on what you decide to use for your liners and your pockets inside this spiral notebook, you may want to edge the uh, or slick the edges on these. This is three four ounce Herman Oak, and as we've shown in another video on slicking that, we're just going to get it wet along the edge and then rub that edge just to give it a nice little look. It's not mandatory. Now these are the pockets that are actually going to hold the actual spiral inside the notebook cover and if you want to slick those go ahead and just slick one long edge on that. That's all you'll need to slick. The other edge will cut off. Okay, so we've already done all the antiquing process and everything. We do have a video on that. You can go back and watch how we do antiquing. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and just pull that blue painter's tape off. And what we need to do is prep and edge and slick those interior edges of the actual body panels where the spine is gonna be. And so we're gonna go ahead and just sand the inside edges there and go ahead and edge them and slick those and get those ready.
And so now we have our spine piece. I'm just using a piece of four to six ounce chap leather. It's just an oil tan chap. It's gonna make that bind up really nice and soft. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure in on each side about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. If you get the pattern pack, it does have where this line needs to be, but you just need enough to kind of go in between the body and the liner of each panel on the left and right side. So when you sew it in, it's secure. But we're gonna go ahead and mark that with a set of calipers, and then we'll go ahead and do our skiving and prepping to get that ready to install. And so here we're gonna come on the flesh side of that spine piece, and you just want a nice, long, tapered edge uh, skived out on that edge there and you want it to come to a feather so it doesn't create a bump inside underneath your liner but you don't want to skive too far in because you could see that potentially inside the notebook so you want that's the purpose of those lines we just drew just to kind of get an idea of how far in you need to do that skiving So while we were doing our spine piece and getting it ready, our edges on our body panel have dried. So we're going to go ahead and put our die on there now. We don't have to worry about it later when that spine's installed. And you just use whatever color you decide to use. We did a black two-tone here, so we're going to go ahead and do black edging. Same on these snap closures. Closures, I did uh, originally think I was just going to edge them, edge dye them. But I went ahead and decided to go ahead and dye them uh, straight black just so they match the two-tone effect that we've got going on there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remark those lines that I did on my spine just because this particular leather, by the time I got done skiving, I couldn't see it very good. So you just want to go ahead and be sure you can see that line really well because that's going to be line up when we glue this stuff up and put that spine inside those panels there. So we just want a nice line that we can line up that body piece to. And so here we're just going to go ahead and put some contact cement along that inner edge there as well as the spine and then let that glue set up real good so that it'll it'll stick really well whenever we glue these together. Now when you're gluing this spine up, depending on the leather that you decide to use, you may need to scratch that up with a little bit of sandpaper so the glue sticks well. And be sure that you do not get that glue past the line or else you'll see it when that spiral notebook folds, uh, folds around and closes shut. Okay, so now our glue has set up and we're gonna go ahead and glue the body panel onto the spine. When you do this, be sure you line up either the left or the right end of the spine piece and do the same side on the other, on the back panel. That will ensure that if your spine, if you need to trim a little bit off, it's trimmed off on the same side and everything stays square. But you just wanna glue that on that line, make sure everything's straight, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and install our liners. Now here I'm gonna get my pattern and go ahead and mark where our snap needs to be on the front. The front panel needs a small snap. We're gonna use the same snaps that we used on belts and we need to mark that hole and go ahead and punch that through so that we don't forget about it. Now we're going to take our pattern again and on the inside I'm going to mark where those snap closures, closures need to go. Uh, we have that marked on the pattern but it's just basically centering it along that edge. We'll do this side and we'll also do the back for the other end of the snap closure. Just put some marks and that's where we'll put glue and glue those pieces in now before we start putting in the liners.
Now when you install these snap closure pieces, just make sure you install them so that whenever it's closed from the outside of the spiral, everything is grain side out. If that's what you're going for, just kind of look at that and make sure. Now we'll go ahead and where, where those snap closure pieces are gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and sand, edge, and slick, and dye those areas. That way it's uh, already done. We don't have to worry about trying to do it after the snap closure pieces are inside there. All right, so I've gotten all those pieces done, those areas uh, dyed and everything. So now we'll go, we're ready to go ahead and install them. We're gonna put some glue in within our marks there of where those pieces are gonna go. And then we'll put glue on the other pieces as well, let that set up, and then we'll go ahead and put those in position. Now that our glue is dry, we'll go ahead and put them in there and we're just gonna glue them in place within our lines, that way they're centered. When you glue these in, kind of look and you might wanna have just a little bit of overhang um, where that snap piece goes. That way you can trim that off and it'll look flush when you sand edge and slick the spiral at the end. But just go ahead and set those in place, tap them down, make sure they're, they're secure and everything and we'll be ready to start installing our liners. All right, so now we're gonna put glue on our liner, lining pieces as well as the body pieces. Be sure you don't get glue into your spine piece on the inside. You will see that if you do, so just go right up to the spine piece as plenty. Just hold it in place. But we're gonna do one, maybe two coats. I usually do two coats on most things, and then we'll let that dry. We'll be able to be ready to glue these liners down and, uh, and get those secure. So now when we glue these liners in, I like to have a little bit of overhang, as you know, all the way around so we have some to trim to. Um, and then you want to have plenty coming into the middle of that spine there so that we're sure to stitch down that liner when we go to stitch the body of that. So we'll just glue those in place, uh, kind of rub them in just a little bit so they're, they're glued in place. And then we'll take them to the bench and rub them with a glass slicker to really get a good contact of that liner so that we don't get any bubbles in there. Now that those are glued in, I'm gonna go ahead and take a trim knife or a brazier blade and I'm gonna go ahead and trim off all of the excess around uh, this spiral notebook. Do not do anything to the center section along the spine. Just leave that excess in there for now. But we'll go ahead and trim that and that way we know uh, our lineups for the pocket for the spiral as well as the loose leaf pocket. You wanna have a nice edge where you know where you're putting that. So now we've got our spiral notebook pockets here. They are a little shorter than the uh, rest of the body and that's, that's on purpose so we can fit the uh, spiral in there. I'm gonna go ahead and measure these and whatever they measure out uh, width wise, you wanna go ahead and go in maybe an eighth inch, you know, something like that, a quarter inch, and just put a mark on the inside liner of the bodies there. And that'll tell you where to line it up so that they're both straight when you glue them in and we'll run glue from mark to mark there around the outside.
and we'll go ahead and glue up our, our pockets as well. Um, what we're going to want to do here is be sure that if you did slick the edge, that your slicked edge is the one that you're not gluing and that's the one that will face the inside of the notebook. Now we're going to go ahead and glue these in place using our marks to line up the inside edge of that and that will ensure that it's straight within the notebook and then you should have a little bit of overhang all the way around. One thing I want to mention is that we're kind of stepping ahead of ourselves as you'll see in a minute. I made a mistake. We should have installed the snap on the tab piece on that side um, but you'll see in a minute how we fix that. So if, you, if you're at this stage you may want to stop, scrub forward, watch it. We got to set that snap piece for that hole where that tab is. Um, I kind of goofed that up in the video and so we had to go ahead and, and pull the interiors out to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and trim off any excess off of these pockets as well because we've still got to put in the loose leaf paper pocket and I want a nice edge to know exactly where to put that at. All right, so we've got our loose leaf paper pocket here and we're gonna go ahead and set that down. I like to leave a little overhang as usual um, off the edge and then we'll just kind of get it squared up in there and then put a couple marks and that'll tell us where we're gonna put our glue. All right, so our glue is set up. We'll go ahead and set those in place by our marks that we made earlier and go ahead and get those glued in real well and uh, be ready to sew this. Before I sew this up, I'm gonna go ahead and groove it. Uh, all the way around both the front and back body panel. If you don't want to groove, you don't necessarily have to. I just think it looks a little more professional and I like the way the stitches look. So we're going to go ahead and groove that and then we'll take it to the sewing machine. Okay, so this is a spot I was talking about earlier. We forgot to put that snap in there, uh, the one side of the snap for the closure. And so what I'm gonna do, and if this happens to you, you can gently go ahead and pull out your interiors, keep the pockets lined up together, and just unglue that. We only used one coat, so it should come off fairly easily. And then we'll go ahead and install our snap. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch a hole there all the way through the liner. And um, that's when we should have installed the snap was after the liner was on versus you know, having to pull the pockets out. But we're gonna take the male side of a, uh, just a normal belt snap. We're gonna go ahead and install that there. And then we can take care of the other end of the snap on that strap after we're done. But this one we need to do before we put our interiors in there and before we sew it up. Otherwise we can't, can't get it in there. So now we've got our snap in place like it was supposed to be way earlier and we'll go ahead and glue and I didn't even put new glue on here. A lot of times if you need to pull on veg tan, if you need to pull that out um, and re-glue it, you, a lot of times you can get away with not putting any more glue. But if it doesn't stick real good, go ahead and add some more glue, freshen that up. But this glue felt just fine and so I just went ahead and put it exactly back where it was and, uh, and just pressed it down and it held just fine. Now here we are at the Cobra Class 4. We're gonna go ahead and sew this up. Um, I'm sewing this today with just a size number 23 needle 
and then 207 thread. That's what I use predominantly in this machine. I like the way the stitches look. It may be a little bit heavy. You could certainly sew this on a class 26 or something else with size 138 thread would be fine. Um, I just really like the way the 207 looks and so that's what we stay with so I don't have to change that machine. But you're basically just gonna sew two big squares. You'll sew the front panel all the way around and sew the back panel all the way around and then you'll be done. All the assembly is pretty much done. So here we're just clipping the stitches. You can use scissors or a razor blade. I just usually use a razor blade here and go ahead and clip all those stitches. And then we'll begin to trim all the excess off from the liner and everything else and get that whole outside perimeter just trimmed up as best we can and it'll be ready for sanding. Now with that snap closure being in the way, it's hard to trim that, that area right there, those liners. So what I like to do is use a straight edge and we're gonna mark both ends there with a nice straight line there where we know where to trim that. Now if you have a French skiver, you could definitely do it with that. Um, I like to use a razor blade and just be very careful and I work my way through the different layers to that snap closure and so we'll cut that through the top layer there that liner that pocket and then we'll begin to cut and work our way through and if you're very careful and just kind of take little bites as you're cutting through you can ensure that you don't cut that snap closure at all again you could probably use a, a French edger of some sort or something like that this works best for me I feel like I have more control doing it this way As far as the inside uh, liner there, we wanna go ahead and trim that directly up against the stitches. So what I'll do is just break any glue that might've got past there loose. And then we'll take a number four edger. You want something that's kinda large. Be careful not to get into your stitches, but you can ride right along your stitches and just edge that right off. It makes a nice clean cut. You're not having to fiddle with a razor blade or anything right there. And since it's single layer, a, uh, a nice good sharp edger will take that right off with no problem. Now here we're on the sanding machine. I'm just gonna sand up all those edges, get them nice and clean. You can definitely do this with a sanding block or something else, um, but you just wanna get it all sanded so all the layers are even so we can edge this and slick it. Now here I'm using a number four Ron's edger and we're just gonna edge all the way around. Remember those areas where the snap closure pieces are, we've already edged and slicked and dyed those so we don't have to worry about that on the top side. We will have to do something on the back side and we'll show you that in a minute.
So now we'll go ahead and edge and or go ahead and slick all the edges that we've just got through edging with the edger and uh, get all those slicked up right quick. So we got all our edges done. Uh, we did edge this part here right there where it's up against that snap closure. We're just going to add just a little bit of water there. And then you can add a little soap if you want to. It's just lining material, so you may not need to. But then we'll just rub that area with our slicking rag. And that should slick up that area just right. And then we'll let those edges dry and they'll be ready for dye. All right, so our edges have had time to dry, so now we're gonna go ahead and dye this. I'm using black dye here because we did uh, the uh, two-tone black color scheme here on this on this notebook, and so we're gonna go ahead and do the edges black as well. Um, my suggestion when you're dyeing edges on something like this, it can be kind of cumbersome. You're gonna have to figure out what, what way to hold it that works best for you. Biggest deal is to try to keep dye off of your fingers so that you don't get it on the liner on the inside. Um, I also suggest dyeing the top of the edge or the outside of the edge first, then flip it over and then catch the interior side um, of that edge and try to meet them both up in the middle of the actual edge. And that'll make it a little easier to, uh, to get a nice consistent uh, edge dye on there without getting dye everywhere. Now in this area here, this way works best for me is just to leave it until I've got all the edges dyed. They've had a chance to dry a little bit. I'll come back with a nice, uh, good sized paintbrush, not a huge one, and I'll get some dye and just paint that little short area in there on the edge of the liner. And um, that's the, the best way I've found to keep it clean so that you don't get it everywhere. There's really no way to dye those liners beforehand. So we go ahead and just do it at the end with a paintbrush. It doesn't take that much time. Now one thing I like to do, especially on uh, edges that have black dye on them, is to let that dye dry for probably a full day and then come back in with a, uh, a, a sheepskin pad like that with some tan coat in there and just catch those edges really well. That'll really help that dye. And on here we're just going to take a rod, any kind of screwdriver, whatever you've got. Um, I've got a fid here and we're just going to break that any glue loose inside that liner. Um, in that pocket there just to make sure that it's open and nothing's glued down and then we'll go ahead and install that spiral notebook I usually start with the hard cardboard backing on that and so get the back one in there first and then you can get it in this pattern you can go all the way in with it and that leaves you plenty of room to then bend that front cover and slide it in place and it'll fit in there nice and it'll close well Now, as you can see here, we've got good clearance all around the notebook. It's not built too small. Um, again, you might need to adjust that spine width when you go to make yours, depending on what spiral notebook you make this for. But you should have good clearance around the top, bottom, and the outer edge there. And then we'll go ahead and kind of mock up that snap closure and just see where we're at. And we're going to mark where we need to put the other side of that snap so that we can get it snap closed. So we're just gonna mark it there and then get our snap set and everything and uh, punch a hole in there and go ahead and set that other end.
I will test out our snap and make sure that our distance is right and that snaps easily. That'll stretch a little bit over time, but it'll work out real nice right now. And it's a nice, uh, low profile, simple snap closure. All right, so that's making our spiral notebook. As you can see, it's not super, super complicated. If you've watched our Bible cover video or the uh, portfolio video, you're just making a notebook. They're all pretty well the same. There's different ways to do them. They're, everybody's got a little different take on them and how they make them. But really the only thing that changes, once you figure out how to make one, you can make them for any size really. So the only thing that changes is the size of the item that you're making the cover for. So if you wanted to get one of these little smaller notebooks, you can see how much smaller this one is. This would be a handy little shop notebook. You could make one of these up pretty quickly just to have a, a kind of a dedicated shop notebook to keep on the bench, to write notes down, things like that, your list, your to-do list, your cut sheets, whatever you need to do. You could make a real simple, just all out of chap leather if you wanted to, just to cover this and, uh, and it would be pretty neat. You can do them for even the real small little notebooks and things like that. But this, I think the way with this, uh, chap leather binding here for the spine. I think that works out really, really well because it can fold back on itself. And like I said, it goes together really, really good. Remember, if you're gonna do the wide rule versus the college rule, just check your sizing. The front panel should be exactly the same on all of them. Um, the only thing you'll have to change is the spine like we talked about at the beginning of the video. So I appreciate it. If you guys want the pattern pack for this, it comes with tooling patterns as we usually do. It comes with all the cut patterns, everything like that. We offer it in both digital and printed. If you're in the United States, I would recommend going ahead and getting the printed one because it's a big sheet of paper like a lot of our large format prints are. And so we'll just mail that out to you. You're insured to get the right sizing and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to go to a printer and have it printed. If you're out of the U.S. and you still want to have the pattern pack, as usual, you can get the downloaded version, uh, the digital version, but you will have to take that somewhere and have it printed. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you in the next project video.